Well, let's talk about some of the things that now your students, uh, who are of a professional caliber, uh, work with you uh, in your current teaching situations and with other people around the city and throughout the country. Comes time to get that famous thing called a job, and the audition process comes up. And I'm sure that this must be something that has politics behind the scene in addition to the uh, obvious requirement of, of technique and facility on stage. Um, how does all this work today? Well, I, I think one of the very funniest scenes in uh, all that jazz with Bob Fosse's production, uh, the audition scene in which the girls hand the choreographer their key and things like that, it's not far-fetched. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Bob Fosse is giving a, a biography of his own life and, and how people are willing to sell their body and so forth. Uh, but this has always gone on. If you were not uh, one of Diaghilev's favorite men, not women, he, the women were great, but his ma male dancers became far bigger now because he made sure they got all the press. And um, there was no bones about your relationship with the Agua and your success. Uh, he was such a man of good taste, uh, about the arts, about the knowledge. He made sure all of his protégés went to museums, they studied music, they were educated to, to the arts. Uh, in that respect, he was very, very good. Um, I, I love this story, and it's in um, a, a book called The Agla, in which Sergei Rifar had come to join his company. And he was a very young, very handsome man. And The Agla invited him up for breakfast. And of course, Rifar, having heard all of the gossip, was afraid to go. So when he didn't show up for breakfast, that made the Agliff mad, so he then took under his wing Anton Dolan, which was probably a blessing to us because Anton Dolan was far more talented than we far. And um, then when Dolan left on his own, because he was a, a person of his own ideas and what should happen, what had he formed his own company, and he was active in dance until the day he died. Uh, then uh, the other brought Leifar back. And Leifar was so bad, they had to drop certain ballets because he couldn't execute them. And Enrico Cicchetti became his private tutor. Wherever Leifar went, Cicchetti went with him and worked on him on a daily basis. And um, the, uh, uh, Leifar was balanced, or not balanced, that's Freudian slip. The Agliff's, um last male dancer. Mm -hmm. And when Diaghilev died, Leifar went to the Paris Opera and uh, basically was there until he died. So the mentoring situation had um, had personal involvements as well. Yeah. It was not purely for the pursuit of dance. And, and, and in, uh, I would imagine that that's it's common in business. And, and it's, uh, but in business these days, people get in an awful lot of trouble with uh, lawsuits and sexual harassment and that sort of thing, but in the arts, uh, well, the casting couch is certainly a, a yeah. familiar thing. And it, but uh, on the other hand, people can get ahead on their talent. Well, I sure. guess you're, you're certainly right. I, uh, it was very funny because I wrote in one of the articles when I was writing about the uh, algorithm, and I said, in parentheses, as I said, it is a shame that sexual politics plays such an important part, past and present. And I thought, I'm going to turn this in, and they cut that out. Mm -hmm. They didn't cut it out because everybody involved in the magazine, who were dancers at one time, or still are, had gone through that. They knew what I was saying was true, because there's not a dancer out there who had in some way, shape or form, either got a job or didn't get a job because of sexual politics. And I think uh, that, that's very sad. And I, uh, it, it goes on, as we're speaking now, it's out there. Uh, there's nothing that can change it. But one of the things that I, I'd like to, to interject here is that I don't care what you do in the bedroom with who. You, when you get on that stage, you've got to produce. Mm -hmm. And if you don't produce, you don't last very long. 
problems. So that may be your foot in the door, but you have to have something to get your body into that door. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of things that we see, the talent you're talking about, may have had to do something strange to get, just to get to be seen. But once they're there, the talent is there. Mm -hmm. um, I feel very funny, and I, I, this is personal. This is a personal feeling of mine. When I was performing, if I was performing for a choreographer who was a homosexual, there was always that question in my mind, was I taken because I could dance, or was I taken because there's hope in a relationship? Mm -hmm. So the fact remains that um, I was always happy to know that I had a heterosexual thing. But if you had a female choreographer that played on it too, yes. And uh, I can, I just could go on and on about how many times I, I've seen that work. Um, well, it's and, and dancers with the dancers always having such beautiful bodies and, and and fabulous movements and things like that. They're they're creatures of loveliness. They're really living yeah. words of art that attract the attentions of their mentors. And I I just I just would imagine that it's a I hard think, thing to avoid. And well, it's, it's not only that, but your audience goes. They fall in love with. Dancers like Nureyev and and, mm -hmm. and uh, some of these people, not that they're not good dancers, please, oh God, not they good, but the audience goes because they're in love with the image they yes. see on that stage. So uh, sex plays a different uh, a part even with the audience mm -hmm. toward what's going on in stage. A lot of men who are heterosexual go to the ballet because these women are running around in flesh-colored tights right. and their little tutus, and uh, so there's that attraction. Now, fortunately, it's there. Otherwise, we wouldn't have an audience. Sure, it has and to be a part of that. Yeah, it's. Uh, uh, I've always thought that there's something very sensuous about ballet and about modern and about all that, and all of the some of the choreography of uh, Martha Graham is very heavily uh, based on sex. Uh, she had dancers, male dancers, dancing in Frozen Trap with long before the thong became popular. Many of her costumes were thong costumes. Mm -hmm. And um, so, again, she knew how to play to get the audience in. Mm -hmm. And if they come in, who knows, they might actually see something good. That's right. But you had to get them there first. That's right.